3D printable hinges that print in place. Stick around and I'll show you a simple way to design them in Fusion 360. Special thanks to Thangs.com for sponsoring this video. I've set up a demo file, so be sure to download it from the link below this video. The hinges are attached to this parameterized box, so both the box and hinges can adapt to various needs. In this tutorial, we'll discuss wall thickness, clearances, using the parameters, how this hinge actually 3D prints in place, and how to test your 3D printed hinge without printing this entire box. Let's also take a look at the new chamfer tool that was released in Fusion 360's December 2020 update. Before activating chamfer, we'll want to roll the history marker to before the shell command. This will ensure that the shell thickness follows the inner corners of the chamfered edges. Simply right click on the construction plane feature in the timeline and select roll history marker here. The chamfer tool can then be found under the modify dropdown list. With the latest version of Fusion 360, you'll see that the chamfer tool is completely revamped. We're now able to select edges, faces, or features just like we can with the fillet command. Let's start by selecting the four edges of the box. Now I set up a parameter called edge chamfer. We can type that out and let's go ahead and divide this by two as we'll make the corner edges smaller than the top and bottom. Notice how we're now able to add a new selection set and we no longer have to create sequential chamfer features. This is a huge improvement, especially when applying chamfers on faces that converge together. This time, I'll select both the top and bottom faces of the box. Selecting the face will automatically apply the chamfer to all four edges. For this chamfer value, I'll simply use the edge chamfer parameter. You may have noticed that each selection set has a second input field. Now when the type is set to equal distance, this will be grayed out. However, if we set the type as two distance or distance and angle, you'll see that we can type out a second value allowing us to further define the chamfer. Let's go ahead and leave this set to the default of equal distance. The other new addition to the chamfer feature is the ability to change the corner type. Notice how you can now change this to a mitered edge where it merges the bevels into a mitered corner. Now you can also select blend where it merges the chamfer with the surrounding faces. Take a look at how different the results are when switching between the three chamfer types. I like the rugged look of the standard chamfer, so I'll switch back to that, followed by the OK button. We can now drag the timeline marker back to the end of the timeline, and let's start dissecting our 3D printable hinge. If you open the user parameters from the modify dropdown, you'll find that I've set up seven parameter values. If you're new to Fusion 360, then be sure to check out my other tutorials that cover creating parameters. With these seven already set up, we can change the length, width, and height of the box. We can also change the wall thickness of the box, which drives the thickness of the 3D print. The edge chamfer will change the chamfers that we just applied, and the hinge extent will change the width of the hinge, ensuring it adapts with the length of the box. You'll see this one requires an equation, which helps make it adaptable to the other parameters. The one that I skipped over, and probably the most important, is the hinge gap parameter. This hinge gap is equal to the amount of clearance you'll want to factor into any 3D printed parts that move. A general rule of thumb is to start with 0.4 to 0.5 millimeters, and then tweak from there based on your printer's tolerances, slicer settings, and any other variables at play. I've set mine to 0.5 millimeters, which is a little bit more forgiving for those printing hinges for the very first time. If I change this to one millimeter for exaggeration, you'll see that each gap grows in size. This parameter simply drives the extrude cuts that divide up the hinge body. They also change the gap between the pin and the inside of the hinge. I'll set this back to 0.5 millimeters and click OK to close the dialog. I've applied a revolute joint to the hinge so we can click and drag on the lid to open it up. As you can see, the inside is hollowed out with the shell command. You'll see that the shell command is driven by the wall thickness parameter. I have the wall thickness parameter set to 2.4 millimeters. 
Now this number is divisible by 0.4 millimeters, which is a standard nozzle size for 3D printers. This ensures the wall thickness in your slicer is divisible by the wall line count. 2.4 will produce fairly strong 3D printed walls. If you want to print something quicker, you can change this to as little as 1.2 millimeters. However, I wouldn't recommend going any lower than that. Let's now take a look at how this hinge works and what allows it to print in place. It's important to first call out the structure of the Fusion 360 file. I've used components for both the top and bottom halves. Components are not only required to use a revolute joint, but they'll also help us dissect what's going on. If I hide the top component, you'll see that the bottom half is made up of three simple flanges along with a pin connecting them. Even though these are technically separate 3D bodies in the software, they would print as one single body because we'll export the entire component. If I turn the top component back on and turn the bottom off, you'll see that we have the opposite. The top half includes only two flanges and they both have a hole where the pin is able to run through it. With the section analysis tool from the inspect dropdown, we can view the inside of the hinge. Notice how the top hinges do not touch the pin of the bottom hinges. There is a 0.5 millimeter gap driven from that hinge gap parameter. This gap may seem large on your computer screen, but at half a millimeter, it leaves just enough room for the pin to print inside the hinges without fully fusing to the hinge. Once you take the part off the printer and close the lid for the first time, the hinge will break free, leaving us with a working hinge. The overall design of the hinge can vary, and there are a lot of opportunities for you to style them with the rest of your design. As long as you include the clearance, the only other critical callout would be the angle of the hinge. I designed this hinge to print without the use of support material. If I open the lid of the box and look at it from the right view, you'll see that the hinges are at a 45 degree angle. 45 degrees or greater will allow the extruder to print each layer by moving out just a little bit more without drooping or relying on supports. If you go through the timeline of the model, you'll find that the majority of the hinge was created with simple sketches and extrudes. Just be sure to fully define all of your sketches, which will ensure that the model is predictable when you change parameters. If you would like step-by-step -step instructions for creating this hinge, then be sure to check out my other tutorial. With the lid of the box open, the assembly can be exported as a single STL file. However, one advantage to user parameters is that we can scale the box down for the first test print. This will help you test the print in place hinges without wasting filament or additional time. And you can double check that your slicing software and printer are calibrated for moving parts. Before we adjust parameters, I'm going to right click on the chamfer feature in the timeline and I'll select the suppress option. This will temporarily disable the feature allowing us to make the box even simpler for the test print. Suppressing allows us to quickly unsuppress the feature later on without having to redo all the work. We can now talk about user parameters, but let's first talk about Things.com who sponsored the third 3D modeling challenge. Check out the link below to learn about the 3D printable gifts challenge. All submissions are due by the 21st of December. Things.com is a new 3D model community that indexes and scans every single model. That means you can find models based on similar geometry and not just the title or description. There are currently more than a million models on the site with more being added every single day. Anyone can upload models for free and you can share them publicly or you can choose to upload them to a private folder, which is a great way to back up your 3D models. To prepare the box and hinge for the first test prints, we'll shrink the length, width, and height. After activating the parameters dialog, I'll change the height to 15 millimeters. For the length, you can go as low as 50 millimeters with the hinges still adapting. After that, you would have to adjust the number of gaps. For the width, you can change it to as little as 5 millimeters without messing up the shell command, but I'll stick with 10 millimeters. This leaves us with a very small box that will require fewer filament and significantly less time to 3D print. 
Last but not least, you can right click on the hinged box assembly in the browser, followed by save as the STL. You can then send it directly to Cura or your chosen slicer. If you're learning Fusion 360 while considering which 3D printer to purchase, then I highly recommend checking out an Ender 3 Pro, especially if you're on a tight budget. It's a great starter printer, and they now have a version 2 with upgraded parts and improved performance. I get a lot of questions about 3D printers, so I recently wrote a blog post where I took a different approach to compare hobbyist printers. Instead of simply comparing features, you'll learn about some of the other considerations to look at. You can check that out at the link below. Special thanks to the new patrons, and thanks to those who supported the channel by buying me coffee. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and check out my Patreon for more demo files. Then, go ahead and check out my 3D printing playlist for more Fusion 360 tutorials.